Chondrosarcoma by Alyssa Cattle and Heidi DeMast. Chondrosarcoma is an uncommon malignant tumor characterized by the formation of cartilage by tumor cells. It is the second most common malignant bone tumor, with osteosarcoma being the first. Chondrosarcomas comprise about 20% of all malignant bone tumors. Chondrosarcoma may or may not be painful and is usually characterized by swelling, which may displace teeth in chondrosarcoma of the jaws. Neurological involvement may lead to headaches and hearing loss. Chondrosarcoma of the mandible can cause widening of the cortical plates. Because swelling of the lateral cortical plate is more visible than swelling of the medial cortical plate, lesions on the lateral cortical plate are usually diagnosed earlier and have a better prognosis. If present in the jaws, chondrosarcoma can cause loose or displaced teeth and disappearance of the periodontal ligament. Histologically, chondrosarcoma appears as an abundance of hyaline cartilage with a lobulated growth pattern of round and oval cells in the cunei with enlarged nuclei. There is no known gender predominance in chondrosarcoma. However, intramedullary chondrosarcoma, which is the most common type of chondrosarcoma, is twice as likely to occur in males. Chondrosarcoma is most commonly diagnosed in patients that are 30 to 60 years old. In head and neck cases, the mean age is 35 to 45, although cases of patients less than 20 years old have been reported. Chondrosarcoma can occur anywhere there is cartilage, but it's most common in the axial skeleton, pelvic girdle, femur, humerus, vertebra, shoulder, sternum, and ribs. About 5% of chondrosarcomas are in the head and neck region. In the head and neck, the most common locations are the maxilla, mandible, nasal septum, ethmoid, and sphenoid bones. Other common locations are the base of the skull and the cervical vertebrae. In the mandible, the most common location is the premolar and molar region, although the mandibular symphysis, coronoid process, and condyle may also be involved. In the maxilla, chondrosarcomas are usually in the anterior region. The incidence of chondrosarcoma is 1 in 200,000 people. About 600 patients are diagnosed with chondrosarcoma every year in the United States. Chondrosarcomas make up about 10% of all primary tumors of the skeleton. About 90% of chondrosarcomas are central and located intermedullary. 5% are extracellular myoxoid, 2% are mesenchymal, 2% are periosteal or juxtacortical, and 1% are clear cell. Radiographic findings may differ significantly depending on the location and extent of the lesion. Chondrosarcomas can be found anywhere there is cartilage. However, in the jaws, they are most commonly found in the anterior maxilla and posterior mandible. Other common locations in the mandible include the mandibular symphysis, coronoid process, and condyle. Chondrosarcomas appear well-defined to well-localized and may have a corticated border. A narrow transition zone, or thin sclerotic margin, may be present. As chondrosarcoma invades the surrounding cortical bone, endosteal scallopine may be seen. The shape of chondrosarcomas is generally round to ovoid. Chondrosarcomas may become quite expansive. In this case, the shape will vary depending on the location within the body. Chondrosarcomas are usually unilocular radiolucent lesions, but may occasionally appear multilocular. There may also be punctate radiopacities present due to dystrophic calcifications or ossification of cartilage. A defining feature that may be present is an arcs and rings appearance, representing enchondral ossification at the edge of the cartilage lobules. Chondrosarcoma may displace teeth or cause premature exfoliation of teeth, disappearance of the periodontal ligament, and widening of the cortical plates. Lesions are single but often metastasize and also recur after resection. Lesions are commonly around 3 cm in diameter. They are generally slow growing. And this shows how chondrosarcoma can cause expansion of the cortical plate. This radiograph shows chondrosarcoma of the left posterior mandible with scalloped border and multilocular appearance. Differential interpretations for chondrosarcoma include chondrosarcoma itself, osteosarcoma, enchondroma, and odontogenic tumor. Chondrosarcoma was chosen because it is a lesion described in this project. It may have the clinical signs and symptoms we described previously, as well as the radiographic description described previously. One defining radiographic feature present in some chondrosarcomas is a characteristic arcs and rings internal structure. 
Osteosarcoma was chosen because chondrosarcomas of the jaw can be mistaken for osteosarcomas, as osteosarcomas are more common in this area. They are difficult to differentiate histologically, but osteosarcomas are malignant tumors that originate in bone, and chondrosarcomas are malignant tumors that originate in cartilage. The two malignancies can be differentiated because in osteosarcomas, malignant stromal cells form bone directly, whereas in chondrosarcomas, bone is formed on a framework of pre-existing cartilage matrix. Inchondroma was chosen because inchondromas are benign cartilage tumors, whereas chondrosarcomas are malignant cartilage tumors. They are difficult to differentiate histologically. They can be differentiated because malignant chondrosarcomas are more likely to have chondrocytes with enlarged atypical nuclei with a distinct chromatin pattern, as well as individual cell necrosis. Also, in inchondromas, islands of cartilage remain separated from the trabecular bone, whereas in chondrosarcomas the bone is infiltrated. Inchondromas of the jaw are very rare, so it is best to consider a cartilage tumor in this area to be malignant. This radiograph shows osteosarcoma of the pelvis and inchondroma of the femur. Odontogenic tumor was chosen because chondrosarcomas in dentate areas can be mistaken for odontogenic tumors, which are very common in this location. Odontogenic tumors are tumors arising from primordial tooth tissues. The two can be differentiated because chondrosarcomas are more likely to cause tooth mobility and have greater radiographic extent than odontogenic tumors. Two treatment options for chondrosarcomas include surgical resection and chemotherapy. Surgical resection is the best and more effective treatment option because chondrosarcomas are generally slow growing and don't respond as well to chemotherapy. However, chondrosarcomas of mesenchymal origin as well as de-differentiated chondrosarcomas are often treated with chemotherapy because they have a more aggressive clinical course and therefore respond to chemotherapy better than other chondrosarcomas. This radiograph shows resection and reconstruction of the proximal femur due to chondrosarcoma in a 12-year-old. After surgical resection, recurrence of chondrosarcoma is very common, and so lifelong treatment is necessary. The five-year survival rate of patients with chondrosarcoma is around 50%. After a patient is diagnosed with chondrosarcoma, immediate referral to an orthopedic oncologist or musculoskeletal tumor specialist at a major sarcoma center is recommended. This is because chondrosarcoma is a relatively rare disease that is best dealt with in a setting with specialized diagnostic and treatment facilities. In addition to better facilities, a major sarcoma center will have an organized team of doctors and other healthcare professionals who specialize in this field and deal with similar tumors on a regular basis. Therefore, these centers are better equipped to treat patients with chondrosarcoma than a primary care physician or an orthopedic doctor. Chondrosarcomas are characterized by swelling in cartilaginous areas. In the jaws, chondrosarcomas may cause displacement of teeth, disappearing periodontal ligament space, and widening of the cortical plates. Chondrosarcomas in the jaws are usually single, round, radiolucent lesions with well-defined to well-localized edges found in the anterior maxilla or posterior mandible. They are usually around three centimeters in diameter and are slow growing, but may displace teeth or cause widening of the cortical plates over time. The best treatment option for chondrosarcoma is surgical resection because these tumors are slow growing and recurrence is common. Therefore, lifelong monitoring and treatment is necessary after diagnosis. And here's our references and our image credits. Thank you for watching our presentation.